Ah, well, we all I'm literally by the foot. What a change! And it's the end of the season. Unfortunately, it's 20 past seven on the 24th, Tuesday the 24th, and I'm beside the koi pond because I want to tell you about something. So this pond is obviously outdoors and I have been feeding it Saki Hikori Balance for about two weeks, but I haven't got much left. I've only got about a oh, quarter of a sack left. So I've probably got about five kilo left. And I'm open, and that is to get this uh, the indoor pond, get them through winter, the main grow on pond. Okay, so that they'll be on that until and then until the temperature drops to 12, and I'm giving them a period of no food at all for about a month, about four to six weeks, January, February time, and then back up again. But the outdoor pond, I've got no food left because so I thought, well, I can't, I can't feed the outdoor pond and the two ponds in my greenhouse. So I'm going to flip you around and show you something now. I've ordered, I've been, I was toying about, turn around, there we go, here's the outdoor pond, so these are looking happy, so I've just been giving them a bit of food, there we go, so the outdoor pond, this will get to six, about six degrees C minimum last year, five degrees C minimum, so I find that once they get to about ten degrees C minimum, they really don't feed a lot, below ten, then I don't bother, I really don't. So there'll be a period of time when the weather's that bad, you're not throwing food in any way, they just won't have it, they won't be like this. So at the minute, it's 15 degrees. The pond, outdoor pond is 15 degrees. So I've been thinking, what food should I get? So I was, I looked at aqua sauce um, and I looked at takazumi. Now I know a lot of people say takazumi, but I thought even for these, is that too good? You know, I was sort of, by the time I was looking at the prices, I'm sort of getting to 10, 12, 12 pound a kilo. And then I was thinking, well, if I'm going to do that, I may as well go for balance. So, sort of, by the time I was getting towards Takazumi, um, whatever, you sort of, I'm thinking, well, I'm only like almost four or five pound off going to balance. So then I was thinking, well, no, so what I'm going to do? So anyway, I did some research and I thought, you know what? Hikari, not Saki Hikari, Hikari is nowhere near the same quality as Saki, but I'm going to give it a go for this, this pond. So what I did, and it's going to be a little bit of an experiment, because I've just found some food in, that's the first time these have had Saki um, Hikari. Now what it is, I've got went for, different ones, but it's Hikari friend. It's uh, it is a Japanese koi food floating, and this is just for a maintenance diet. So it's only 28, it's only 28% protein, so it's not iron protein. I know the light's not good, but there's the 28, 3, 4, 10% moisture, 8% ash. 0.5% phosphorus, got some absorbic acid in there, vitamin E, vitamin D3, and then vitamin A. Now, what they recommend, sorry about the light, the light's just gone to a different font, uh, colour. So, when it's 18 to 30 degrees, they recommend feed up to four times per day, or the amount your fish will consume within a few minutes, normal, you know, feed no more than twice a day if you're between 11 and 18. That's where I am now. So these will probably get fed just two, three times a day, just a little bit. And then below 11 degrees, which is what I was on about, these recommend Hikari wheat germ formula, which I don't believe in that. I'm not into that mantra of feeding, switching to wheat germ. Uh, wheat, wheat germ. I just think it's a myth. And it is a produce of Japan. So it's not complete crap. <laughs> it's not complete rubbish. You know, Hikari in general is a good is a good brand. So I thought it would be interesting. Yeah, it is 10 kilo. So I thought it'd be interesting. It's a medium pellet. And they've gone straight on it straight away. Straight on it. So I thought what would be interesting 
So while they're eating, it's 15 degrees. I can I can put food in, but yeah, they're straight onto it, so they're not shying away from it. So I'm going to compare it. So Saki Ikori Balance, which they have been having for two weeks, to Saki. Sorry, I'm going to stop after saying Saki Ikori Friend. So this is Ikori Friend. Okay, so they're loving it. So what I'm going to do is compare, and it'll be a daylight shot as well compare what waste is going into this pond so as you can see at the minute on balance though so these were getting silk silkworm pupae and some red pellet that i was having and the waste in here was quite a lot it was floating around there was finds of food and muck and all sorts in there on the bottom there was quite a lot so if i show you at the bottom now in this mode there's the food on the surface there look you can see the fish dead clear now look at the bottom there, you cannot see any food waste. There's the bottom drain, just there, so it's just, there's just no waste in this pond at all, it's absolutely brilliant. And I contribute that purely to Saki Hikori balance, and growth is the same. So when I normally put food in here, I will get a lot of debris in the bottom so i'm not going to feed them any less or any more i'm going to do the same routine that i'd normally do that i've been doing for the last two weeks and let's see how much muck well let's see how much waste these now produce because to see how digestible this food is because with balance and growth the beauty is with sake ikori is that the a big proportion of that food the koi digest it so the digestibility is really high now with this being a lower quality food it should be a lower digestibility because the ingredients aren't as good the food pro the protein source isn't as good everything about that food is not as good i mean for a start i was paying for balance, I was normally getting a sack of 15 kilo for 150 pound. The last two seasons, I managed to get it for 150 pound. That was 50 pound, so that's a third cheaper. So let's see if that equates to. Well, let's see what it equates in waste. So I just thought it'd be interesting. Look at the bottom drain. Can you see the bottom? You can't. Can you see it? You can't really see it. I can see it, but you guys can't. So I apologise. There's the bottom drain. But I thought, if I show it you at night now, you can actually see, you know, in a different type of light, with these different type of lights here on this um, LED that I've got. It's on to a white light now, look. On the amount of waste in there, but I will come back in the daylight. So there you go, first part of this video. What I'm gonna do, I'm going into my greenhouse in a minute, my grow on, and I've got in here, the actual here's the remainder of this Saki Hikori balance that these was having. So I'm going to take this, take this now down to my greenhouse. These are now going to go into there to for my 2k pond, and then the rest of this I've decanted. I've got three buckets of in there, so most of it is decanted into buckets. There's one there, look, and then there's two in there. And then the rest is going to go on the indoor 2k quarantine. So Saki Kori balance on the 5k grow on. On the 2k, they're going to get Saki friend. And I'll show you in there what the waste is like in that pond as well. And that's going to go be converted to Saki, not Saki, Ikori friend. Bloody hell, it's going to take some getting used to. <laughs> and, I'll and I'll show you the pellets. I'll have them side by side and I'll show you as well. So, on that note, first impressions, there's no smell to this at all. There really isn't. Now, straight away with the balance, there's a, a bit of a, pro, you get a bit of fishiness to it. Whereas this, it smells a bit like, I weigh it as well. I do a comparison on weight with the same amount in a cup and weigh them out. If anything, this smells a bit like poultry food, not poultry food. Um, if you've ever had chickens and you buy their corn and stuff like that, it smells a bit wheaty. 
I don't know why. No, that's that's wheaty smell. Yeah, it smells like there's no fishy smell to it at all. 28% protein. So I'll see you down the greenhouse. Indoors, as you can see, lights are in the background with the lovely white LED. And uh, let's spin you around because let's see what this an hour later and that pond has had I've just sat there watching on my little chair there and that pond at eight o'clock had a feed and it's been one week since I did the adjustments of my feeding routine which I'll probably do on another video but the difference in the coy behavior of those fish has been night and day so I've done some tweaks so on that note let's because I've been having a bit of a potter in here and this this feeder has got Saki Kori Balance in it and it's got it's probably about 50-50 with Saki Kori Balance and Hikori Friend. And so that will just mix in with that now and then they're gonna get completely switched over to Hikori Friend. So they have had some, I put some in by hand, see if they take it straight away, and they have. Now if we look in here, and I'm quite aware that the light is not great, if I zoom in. That's zooming in two times, as you can see. There's that fish at the bottom, and it's quite close. If I zoom back out, that's what is technically my view. That's my view, and that's me zoomed in. So do that again. As you can see at the bottom of here, the light is so bad. But I think my point is, there is, and I'll do this in the daylight, there is a very, very minimal amount of waste in this 2K pond with four fish in here. Now we'll see what the Ikori friend does because they're going to be converted over to it. Now, I know what you're probably saying, why would you convert blah 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 to an inferior food? But these haven't been fed loads anyway. These haven't been fed to grow to a maximum potential. These, this is my QT and these are the ones with slight ailments. Now one of them is a Taniguchi. This one here, the Taniguchi Showa, um, which on my previous videos months ago, they said it was one for the future. That's what the breeder said. And that is about fully healed up now so i will do that in the daylight but the actual fin now on this side has all but healed up been an amazing recovery so less of them onto this one so let's we can get onto here these are still going to be on saki hikari balance saki hikari balance you can see in there hardly any waste at all but this really is pulling some on that bottom drain that three inch bottom drain really does pull some through here and that pumps just on about 67 percent around about 70 percent so it really is pulling but look at that the the difference i've been um the difference in this pond that i've seen in a week has been amazing now I've got like this little um, honey sim from my bees which went all manky so I've strapped it to a bit of this and I'm actually using it to skim off the proteins in the pond, the foam. And as you can see there, I've skimmed quite a bit to it's like snow. So now I can see a bit better. So yeah, these, there's a little bit of food there it was about 10 minutes ago there's one pellet left there that's about it by the looks of it and there's one over there so in 10 minutes or so they've eat the food portion that's come down but i'm going to get onto that feeding regime again because i'm well over the moon so yeah i'm going to come in here the daylight tomorrow morning and we'll see the daylight on the main pond daylight in this one and then we'll soon see what the waste is doing in this pond compared to the balance. In fact, they've not switched over yet, but it will start to make a difference, I think. So the main thing will be the main pond in the daylight. 
because they are fully they are fully on it now and then this is a mixture so um, yeah we will see these are feeding a lot better again as well they really are so for that Taniguchi golden corn and then the golden corn now them two are really are the ones that come up first first now so the dynamics have changed again in here but I think what I've altered not too much I may as well quickly blurt it out now and put it in this video I've basically dropped to three hour windows so if, instead of feeding every two hours feeding every three hours and instead of volume two I've gone to volume one and within a week of doing that they've started feeding I mean when I sat there I sat here about the eight o'clock and they was on the food splashing about and really on it so I'll show you on the next video I'll sit here and we'll have a look at the behavior and we'll talk about that and also the nitrite and ammonia has come down because there's something else I want to talk about so the next video will be about this pond the changes I've made the feeding changes and also the changes in the KH and the pH and why I've done that they're just looking really well so yeah I'm not daft enough to then put all that effort in and that cost of 15 kilos of Sakiakari growth from May June July August September five months of Sakiakari growth that's 15 kilos that have gone into here into this pond well a little bit went into this one so let's say I think 12 kilo I said so say 12 kilo of Sakiakari growth has gone into this pond I've gone to a lot of effort to get the bodies and the growth so no I'm not daft enough to then drop that down to a really inferior feed and risk the effort I've put in so they are staying on balance but this one these haven't had the same regime and as much food and they haven't had the same regime on the main pond so that's been method of madness there but let's see how we're going to be interesting we're going to cross compare the two with waste but they do have in that range if you want a bit more of a lower cost a lower budget um, and Saki Hikari is out your range you might want to consider that range of Hikari they do a wheat germ they do a gold they do a staple um, the one I've got is Saki friend sorry Hikari friend ah anyway you'll see me in the daylight out that door now I'm around the main pond it's the morning after the night before so here we are by day around the main pond and as you can see there's a leaf there but forgetting that if we look straight down here and the fish are looking for food just try and zoom you can see the bottom of the pond there there's a little bit of debris there but it's never been I can confirm personally it's never been this clear and I put it down to Saki balance nothing else I'm not pulling any more that there actually is that's a leaf off this grapevine so if I zoom in back in there there's the bottom drain there's the Jaguar I zoomed in look Woo! Um, so yeah, I'm really zoomed in now. There's a bit of debris there, look. Bit there. So you're gonna get bits at the bottom. If we go down here, so there we are there, look. Look at that, for that section. There's no fines floating about, no muck. It's never been this good. Honestly, I, I can't tell you. So apart from the odd, and I think they're like odd stones. I think that's all they are. I think they're just dodd stones, they could even be koi teeth. Yes, koi have teeth at the back apparently, like grinders. Look in this corner, this is normally a hot spot in this corner. Look at that, absolutely clear. So I hope you agree, that couldn't be any better. Even if I had a drum filter, couldn't be any better. And all I've got is my own made brush box here. So, here's the 
Hikari friend. And as you can see straight away, anybody that has fed Saki Hikari balance or growth, the colour of it is a darker brown. And when you put it in the pond, you do get a little, tiny little bit of the oil coming off it, but not a lot with Saki um, Hikari. But with this stuff, it's very light in nature, colour. Um, and I suspect because it's less protein in there, it's got to be lighter, hasn't it? It's actually got to be by volume lighter. So if we throw this in, I think the feed, you know, the coil will take it straight away willingly. Chagoy, yeah, they love it, no problems there. So for the fish, there's not a lot of difference to them at the minute. They're not spitting it out. The actual pellet size is quite the same. The bags inside have got the plastic wrap inside of them. So anything, you know, the packaging and that is quite similar to um, sake. The fish seem happy enough. So for 50 pounds for 10 kilo, let's see what waste the fish produce. So how digestible is that food that's the question because the more digestible it is the, so the more that they take in the more growth body structure shape size that you're going to get from your koi the less digestive that food is and it comes goes in a little bit's taken in and the other stuff comes out the other end you're going to get more waste and they're not going to grow as much and the body's not going to develop as much okay so that's probably not news to you but um that's why cheaper foods aren't always the answer and then the other benefit is your pond is clearer like I say if you're chucking like mealworms in and silkworm pupae them shelled bug things and you're chucking them in you will get waste I did wheat germ one year I made the wheat germ myself boiled it up out of garlic and stuff and the waste was incredible because it's not digestible at all it's hardly digestible so I'd imagine wheat germ foods you're going to get the same sort of thing didn't that Kikikuriu look lovely then? It was underneath, like silvery underneath when it was popped up on its fins. So yeah, that's them. So 50 pound a sack. They're gonna keep me ticking over now. The water temperature is 14.6 and I can feed that down to 10, maybe nine and a push. And then they tend to not feed anyway. So this will do me. So question is now, Koi like it. They've mopped all that up within minutes, look. There's only one, two, three, four, five, six pellets left. And one in the top corner. Seven pellets left. And one there, eight. So I'll leave them to that there. That koi there is four foot down, at the bottom of the pond. And like I said, I've proved already that your waste in there is minimal. So let's go and pop down to the greenhouse and see what that is doing by day. So here we are indoors by day and the 2K pond that's got the four fish in it. Let's have a look at the bottom of the pond. You can just see a little bit, I won't zoom in properly, it's gonna be difficult with this one I think, but as you can see for this one, I've been more than happy with the actual food. With Saki Balance, again, the floating waste, the waste in the bottom of your pond is so minimal with this food. It's just incredible. I have with other food, because it's only a small footprint with this pond, had loads of food in here. And obviously the more you feed, the more waste you are going to get if it's not being lifted up and taken into the bottom drain in the filter or your pump to your filter um but i've noticed a difference like i say incredible difference with saki so we'll have a look at that again let's have a look in this corner because normally corners you get like dead spots don't you there you go there's a bit there look so that's the biggest accumulation there bearing in mind these was fed last night with it as well little bit there around the edge. I used to get quite a lot as well, here. 
just down there there's the core at the bottom of the pond the four foot deep that is so there you go so there's the benchmark let's see if this is probably going to take though about a week to get this 50 50 saki hikari balance and hikari friend out of it so we're going to get a mixture and like i say these are still on the growth and at the bottom of this one is hardly anything sitting in this pond um hikari friend in my hand it was very pale but look at the color of this one this is saki Akari balance the green bag and they have been on saki Akari growth all summer so these are getting the balance let's see just if we can see a bit of koi behavior um and then we'll conclude this week's video so again guys if you would while we're just watching a bit of koi behavior there you go lot one's coming up and it is guess what it is it's the 38 cm golden corn there look see it look at it when it comes to the surface it'll turn yellow but when underneath white there's a tamasaba coming up another tamasaba coming up that's the 38 cm golden corn again so you can find that the the younger fish can be a bit faster and skittish and the other fish the bigger fish are a bit more slower now what i noticed last night and i haven't noticed for a while is the bigger fish like this momentaro shower coming up for food and really going at it so there's the golden corn again so you can see the fish behavior they look a lot more interested there's the sake sorry sakai the sakai fish form tancho sankey sorry tancho sankey oh my god with all this sake and ikari and all that it's proper confusing me so there it is look look at that it looks beautiful end of this month that's coming up so that started feeding so it's looking like the golden corn and the sankey from sakai fish farm is going to continue doing well because them two have both been up already um, the Kajaka at the background there is circling looking, showing an interest. Golden Corn again, the 38cm female, crikey, I wished I'd had that a bit longer to get some food in it, but anyway, that's a lot to look forward to. Come next May through to September, get that on some Saki Kori growth, get some body on that, I'll get it growing hopefully. But the water clarity in here now is clearing up as well. So I think, I think I've just got to admit, um, you know, not defeat, but um, my feeding schedule before was obviously too much for them. Every two hours from um, seven in the morning till two o'clock in the morning, every two hours was just too much. And I think the volume I added on was on setting one is about six, seven gram. And on setting two is about 12 as much, 12, um, twice as much as that. That's both golden corn now are up. Bloody marvellous, isn't it? So yeah, the difference has been a lot different in a week. So I'm sat here talking and they're not, you know, going, you know, being really shy. So that may be because the dynamics have changed also. Maybe the golden corn now because they're a bit more aggressive feeders those two maybe now the other fish feel bloody hell got to get in there before those two greedy bugs do i don't know maybe it is the changes that i've done but anyway that's on the next one kh and ph so yeah koi behaviors improved that's on the next one please please hit that like button be really appreciate if you do that now for me if you haven't subscribed already please hit the subscription button the notification bell so you can watch these nutters see how those golden corn and see how all the other fish progress and is that it well i've got you yeah, i think that's about it oh and if you have subscribed already thanks for the subscription it's much appreciated what are your fish doing 
it's the Battle of the Breeders Koi Wholesale event this weekend. It's Wednesday, so I've got a few days for that. I'm going on Sunday and I'll be picking up the DK line Shiro. So that'll be really interesting to see how that's progressed and grown. I suspect it's probably grown similar to the actual um, Sankey from Sakai Fish Farm, which has done really well. And I think it will be a similar sort of size to that, if I'm honest with you. Um, I've got no idea what's come up in terms of Sumi. Nothing might have come up. It may have come up. Who knows? That was the beauty of it. And I did pick, which looks like it was going to be a quite a heavier type Shiro. So we will see, because that might not come up. It might have just been what was underneath that never comes up. Because I can see some on this um, Sakai fish on this shoulder here in the middle where there's that white patch in the middle. That's just not coming up yet at all. So, thanks for watching. See you on the next one where I'll have a rambling about what I've done about the KH, what's happening with the pH, KH, ammonium, and nitrite. And the reasons why, coupled with the new fish, why I think they are feeding like they are now, and why the behavior has changed. See you on the next one. Thank you.